Hey guys, it's Sandy. So I'm gonna show you how to take a five hour burning candle and make it into a candle that will burn for 24 days. So I, you're probably wondering why would I even wanna do that? Well, none of us ever know when the power might go out. And I just think it's really important to know different skills. Well, this is a really cool skill that will, um, you know, have a candle burning for days and days and days. All you do is use vegetable shortening. So this is Crisco. This is the Walmart brand because it was less expensive for the exact same thing, but basically it's just Crisco is all that you're using. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I know that we live in the technological age, we have flashlights, we have our phones, but none of us ever know whenever we might lose um, power. So it could be a natural disaster, it could be the power grid goes out, it could be a snowstorm, or it could be immense heat. So there's a lot of reasons we just need to have a long burning candle that is very effective and very cost efficient to make. So let me show you how to do this. So the first thing I am doing is just putting as much vegetable shorting, shortening down into the jar as I can. So you can see how I just put it in and push it down. But what I want you to see is I'm going to heat all this up because this is gonna go right down in the jar even more. See all the bubbles? that are in the jar, I don't want any bubbles in here. So the first thing I need to do is melt this down so it's one solid bit of vegetable shortening and then I'll show you how to use the candle in it. Now I'm just gonna stick it in the microwave and start melting it and then as it melts down, I will just add more shortening to the jar. So you can see how the liquid is melted. I only need to add just a tiny bit more of this to the jar just to get it up to the rim part. This rim up here is where I'm going to. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more to give it a little more burning time. This will melt down. And then I'm gonna take my candle. And why I said this was a five hour candle is rule of thumb is one inch per hour on a taper candle. And this is a five and a half inch candle. So it would burn down to five um, inches or so it would burn for five hours. So what I wanna make sure though is why I picked this one is it'll stay down inside of the jar. Now let's say that I wanted to use a jar like this instead. See how tall this candle is? Safety is absolutely imperative. So I don't want a candle sticking up above a jar. You know when you buy candles and the wicks are down in? That's for a reason. I also chose wide mouth in both of my jars because I wanna be able to get down in there to light the wick as it you know gets down into the jar. Um, you can use a skinny one, just you know use those long things that you click or a long um, match then would work. But how to cut this down? This is just a taper candle I've used before for a dinner. But what you would do is just measure where that would need to be. Actually, I want to turn it upside down like this. Measure where it would be need to be to be on there, and then I would cut off the bottom of the candle. I'll go ahead and do that. So now my candle would fit right down in there. I actually think I would wanna cut off just a little bit more just to get the wick down inside. But you know what I'm doing here. You can see what I'm doing as far as cutting off the candle. So this is almost melted now. It almost looks like lemonade, but what I'm gonna do is then let it cool down. So once it cools a little bit, you can put this jar in the refrigerator and just let it cool down because you want it to be solid again. Solid without any bubbles is what it's gonna be this time. I've seen other ways that people do this where they melt it in the microwave, then pour it in the jar, but why dirty more dishes? That's why I just wanted to do it in one jar, let it cool down, get solid, and then I don't have anything but just this one bit of dirtiness. Now, I have a lot of vegetable oil left. This is a three pound container, so I can make several different can um, candles out of this one container. So why are we using vegetable shortening? Did you know that Crisco actually started as a candle company? That's what that little candle flame on Crisco is. It's like a dot on the eye, but it's also a candle flame because it was a candle company. Now this was the exact same thing. I bought this at Walmart for like $4.20. The Crisco brand and the same thing was like $6.50. So just because there was no difference, that's why I got the Walmart brand instead. They work exactly the same. So this is pretty much cooled down enough that I'm gonna put it in my refrigerator now and then I'll show you how to do the rest of this. After the jars cooled down just a little bit, I did move them from the refrigerator to the freezer so they would cool down quicker and get solid quicker for me. Okay, these are both solid enough. Oh, both. 
I went ahead and filled this one up also. So these are both solid enough to go ahead and work with, and then they will continue to get white, just like the white color that we started with. So all you do is take your candle and push it right down in. <laughs> That's as easy as it is. That's all there is to it. Push the candle down in, and then we will light them and just get the candle going. So I take this one and just push it straight down in. Okay, now you see where the um, vegetable shortening kind of came up off the candle on this side. We're gonna take our finger. That's why I have a paper towel here. I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm going to make like a little um, a moat basically right around there. That way, whenever the wax starts to melt, it's going to go all the way around and melt into that little moat first and then melt down into the candle. I want the candle not to, I want the candle to burn all the way around. So I want the wax to go out whenever it comes into the candle at first so that the whole candle burns down instead of making, you've seen those candles where you just have a hole in the middle. That's not what I want. So there, I made kind of a moat on the outside. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna just take my finger, move that bit around that came out there, and I'm just gonna make a bit of a moat so that the wax will go down in here first and then melt the entire candle down as it burns. Now listen, it has to be safety first, so make sure that your candle is down inside that you can actually put on a lid easily because the candle's down in. These candles were burn, burn for eight hours a day for 24 days. You're taking a five hour candle, burning it um, for eight hours a day for 24 days. That's amazing. But we don't want it fires. You don't leave it on at night. Make sure and be safe no matter what. You talk to firefighters that so many times a candle has caused a fire, a house fire. So make sure that you're really safe. Make sure that you have a good solid base so whatever jar that you pick, make sure it's a solid base. And um, so it's not gonna tip over, you know, the skinny ones at the bottom that get bigger. Don't use those. I bought this at Hobby Lobby because I only wanted one jar. I had these jars already. And then I also bought the candles at Hobby Lobby also. I went to Walmart when I was there one day and looked and they didn't have any. One candle was 77 cents and this was four. This was $4.20, so, and I, can, I have enough in here to make another whole candle also. So a great deal, it will burn for days. It's a great uh, skill to know how to make a candle that will burn for many, many, many hours. So I wanna show you what it looks like. I lit this candle for about a half an hour and you can see that well, that moat that I made for the wax. And then this is the big thing. Five hours later on that five hour candle, this is how much has burnt down. These are amazing, you need to make some. All right, that's all I have. Until next time, I'm out.